Welcome back. It's time for another Unscripted Book Club, and Maya Hackett joins me now from the Springfield Green County Library. Maya, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. It's always good to see you. So you brought in three books for me. Always excited to see and learn about the selections that are brought in. So this first one's called The Saturday Night Ghost Club. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this one. So The Saturday Night Ghost Club is a novel written by Craig Davidson. It's a coming of age novel about a bullied boy, some friends he makes over one summer and his ghost obsessed uncle. Oh. And they basically spend the summer investigating haunted locations around Niagara Falls together. And it's, so it's written from his perspective as an adult, both reflecting on his relationships as a child and uh, his current occupation as a neurosurgeon reflecting on his first uh, encounters with mental illness. So it's really sweet, it's really funny, and it's also a surprising tearjerker that I just have not been able to get out of my head. I read it early this year and Aww. I haven't stopped thinking about it. Well, I was just thinking, like I'm puzzled by the complexity and the layers of just all those different kind of tropes and themes mm -hmm. that you discussed, you know, just there briefly. So. Okay, so the thing that stood out to me most was you talked about this boy and his strong relationship he has with his uncle and you know, yes. spending the summer with him, whatever. Um, what do you think people maybe that, let's say you're struggling or not struggling, or you just really are close with your family, what do you think people will take out of the, like, the family relationship aspect of this book? Yeah, it's a very strong focus on the family relationships with uh, his uncle who has a mental illness that he discovers as he gets to know him better over this summer and his parents who are trying to keep this darker secret from him mm -hmm. but who also you know are struggling with how to raise a you know boy who's going into teenagerhood and he doesn't yeah. have many friends and they want to give him the best chance that he possibly can have in the yeah. world what do they tell him and what do they keep from him yeah i know this can kind of get dicey but i'm curious too you know you keep saying mental mental illness mental yes. health um for those that maybe deal with mental health issues you know frequently in their lives do you think that this will be maybe healing or therapeutic or maybe just like a source of comfort in any way um, I'm not sure. I mean, okay. it's, it's very compassionate. Yeah. It's just not necessarily from the perspective of the characters who are dealing with the trauma and okay. mental illness. It's the boy who is getting to know them. Yeah. And then there is the value of the, the neurosurgeon perspective that I thought sure. was very well researched and very emotional as he looks back on the human brain and the ways that our lives shape yeah. our brains. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm so fascinated by this one, but I wanna to get to the next one. The next mm -hmm. one's called Player Piano. Tell yes. me about this one. Player Piano is the first novel published by Kurt Vonnegut, so it's an older one. Uh, it was partly inspired by his time at General Electric, and it's, he is very funny, very uh, humorous, but also very disturbing, kind of, mm. as it, uh, particularly in the age of AI everywhere. Yeah. It's me thinking. Uh, it's a story about a world where machines have taken over the work of people. A lot of people are oh. out of jobs because the machines can do it for them. Ah. And uh, so I think whether you're skeptical of AI or not, he paints a really uh, just vivid argument for the value of human creativity and the dangers of giving up our own control just because it may be easy. Okay, I want you to dive in that a little bit more on why, why people should read it because I think about, you said AI immediately, I was like not interested. And the reason I say that is I've said often, you know, like with the pandemic and just the state of the world in the last few years and then now um, AI, it's like we don't want to read or watch about what we're experiencing. Like we go to that as a source of like entertainment or yeah. getaway. So why would you encourage someone maybe like dive into this and consider, you know, what he's sharing on yeah. it? I find it really valuable uh, reading particularly older things that talk about stuff that we deal with now. Yeah. I think seeing someone else's perspective from so long ago, and there are ways that he sees, you know, envisions the way that world may have come that don't look anything like our world. Yeah. But then there are still these nuggets of truth in it, and I find that really fascinating Ooh. to explore. Okay. And again, you know, I mentioned so source of comfort earlier. Mm -hmm. I think it could be maybe comforting a little bit because AI is this very daunting thing for a lot of people. Yeah. But fortunately, unfortunately, it's going to continue being a big part of our yeah. world, right? So I really like that. Okay. Lastly, you have Convenience Store Woman. Yes. And the Convenience Store Woman is a novel written from the perspective of an outsider uh, that asks us to sort of view the people we might be tempted to see as normal, uh, as strange and mysterious. Mm. And then our protagonist, who is viewed as odd from the people around her, she has an undisclosed uh, neurodivergence, but she's not diagnosed. Ah. And uh, then we're invited into her inner world and get to know her. Uh, she works in a convenience store, hence the title, sure. and that's her domain. She sees it as the place that makes sense, the place where she excels, but her family and friends aren't content to see her find happiness in a life that they don't see as status and success. And the Whoa. book asks us uh, what really makes a life well lived. Yeah, I like this idea of also expanding outside of what we see as normal or how we see, we, we think people or the world should be. I think that's really yeah. good. So 
These were fantastic selections you brought today. I am not a huge reader and you have me completely engulfed. So if people are interested in more um, information from the library, how do they go about getting that? Yeah, you can find uh, the library's website, thelibrary.org, or go to any one of our 10 branches in town. All right. Well, Maya, thank you so much for thank being you. here. All right, you guys stay right there. There's plenty left on hour three of Unscripted. We'll be right back.